Right, we haven't done a video in a while, but I have been fishing, doing little bits and bobs after work and whatnot. And I've been quite lucky because every time I've come down here, most of the time I've managed to get the swim I want. And the swim I want is actually one of the weediest swims on the lake. Basically, for the last month or so, even longer, um, the fish have been holding up in this area, and that's purely because of the weed. You know, if you get a lake that's weedy all round, it's a bit different because the fish will move about and they'll be everywhere. But if you get a lake, it's, it's the same contents as if you get a lake that's not weedy at all, and um, you're fishing the same contours all over the lake, it's a little bit more difficult to locate them. You have to look for signs of them topping, bubbles and stuff like that. With here, there's this one end that is just really weedy and the rest of it is not weedy. So, where are the fish are going to be? I mean, you have a look at this. If I grab a file of this, I'm bound to find some life in it and some food. There's snails, insects, all sorts in it, uh, mussels. So the fish are obviously hovering around this. It's a natural source of food. It's easy to come by, it's good for them. They know it's safe. Um, we've got little worms here and everything. So yeah, so they know it's safe. So if I can present my rods in a way around it, or areas that are clear with a nice bait, I believe that I've got a better chance of catching up here on the short sessions and the time I have got. So this video is just gonna show you some of the things I do. Everyone's different, again, it's just my opinion but these are some of the things I do to help me land the fish in weedy areas and also locate uh, clear spots. And this is all from the front of the swim. At the end of the day, don't want to hook a fish out there and then get it halfway in and I can't land it because of the weed in front of me. So I only took about half an hour to rake it. So rope the front of the swim, got a clear channel now that the fish can come through so when we get them, easy enough to net. When I'm looking for a spot, sometimes the weed gives it away on the surface. As you can see here, there's a nice gap in between both weed beds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast out, feel the lead down, and what I'm looking for is a vibration through the rod. And the vibration I should get, either I'll get a firm dunk, so imagine if I was chucking the lead, it was lining on something hard, it would be an instant dunk, nice and firm. It could be gravel or a nice hard uh, bottom. Or I'm going to get silt which is going to feel a little bit like weed. Silt and weed low to the bottom is going to feel the same. It's going to feel like it's landing on a cushion. And longer weed, higher weed, it's going to feel like the lead's hitting the bottom a lot quicker and, you know, not go down as smooth. A few key things to remember when you're casting the rod. As the lines come into your desired uh, distance, start to feather it down. And when it hits the water, you want a nice tight line to go through the water. And also the rod tip up so you can work with the depth. Where I'm casting to here is not that deep as you're seeing. It's a shallower spot in amongst the weed. So as I cast, get the rod tip nice and high, feel it down, and then bam, it's on a nice little shelf out there that's really clear. And I'm dragging back here just to check how big the air is and how much leeway I've got in front of it. So it's nice and clear and then I hit into a weed bed just there. So that's the spot. When I do this sometimes I put on an old rig as well and you can cast it out, drag back just to double check the bottom sometimes where you, you know, you're not sure if it's silt or, or silt weed, low silt weed. You can do that, put an old rig on, cast out, little drag back and then fast wind, bring it in, see if you're picking up any clumps and whatnot. That can also help. Once I've found a few areas that I'm happy fishing, I wrap the rods and take a note of the distances. And this helps with accuracy and time. So I can quickly, after having a fish, get the rods back out on the spot by wrapping the distance that I've logged down. And also I can wrap the spawn rod and get bait out to the area very quickly and accurately. One of the key bits to my setup has been getting rid of the lead. So I just push the towel rubber on lightly and then as soon as the fish picks up, lead shakes away very, very quickly. This helps one less thing to get tangled up in the weed and also helps bring the fish to the top. Another way is using PVA string, tying around the lead clip rather than having a towel rubber. So you can do that as well. My rig's really been simple, little pop-up rig, thread on a mesh bag, and that's it really. That's all I've been using in this video to catch the fish you're about to see. A few friends have been using solid bags, fishing into the lighter weed, but I've been fishing clear of spots and little silty spots, so I haven't found a need for them yet. In terms of baiting up, I've just been spawning out a mixture of pellet and boilie over the clear areas, clipping up the spawn rod and just putting it out that way. And also there's a margin um, of a bank that's unfishable that's got some really nice clear areas on, so just walking around there and baiting up from the bank. What I've been doing a little bit different 
it's because I know I'm going to come down here. Don't know when I would next get back down, but I've been just before I've been leaving. I've been putting some more bait on the areas just to keep fish eating on that area and keeping it weed free, and also you know an advantage that become a little bit more confident. And because I've had short sessions, get down and hopefully nicking a quick bite off those areas. When fishing weedy swims, I like to keep my rod tips nice and high. And my two main reasons for this are, one, it keeps the line out of the weed. So rather than going through it to the lead, it should settle nicely across the top of it, um, not sinking into it. This helps with the fight of the fish. And also when I'm winding into change rigs, I shouldn't be picking up as many clumps. Number two, I like to fish locked up when I'm fishing weed. And when you do this make sure you've got quality you know backrest and the pods nice and secure you don't want to lose a rod and you need to be on them because the fish safety comes first and you don't want to lose tackle what this does with the angle of the rod when you get a take the rod starts to compress straight away that's putting pressure on the fish um, the lead will drop really really quickly because you've only got it on lightly or with pva string and we're hoping that by doing that the fish is coming up in the water straight away before we've even hit the rod straight away the rod's getting to work it's put pressure on the fish get the fish up in the water that stops him hopefully going into weed beds either side of the spot or around him and we can get him nice and high and play him over the top of it once the fish is hooked i like to keep the rod tip nice and high so i can keep him as high up in the water as i can and just if the swim allows it i like to walk back with the rod and keep steady pressure on if the swim doesn't allow, just winding down gently, making sure the line's tight at all times. It's always handy to have someone on hand who can net the weed, but sometimes you just have to be careful. If you've done the raking and that, you just watch it and see where the fish is. It might be behind the first clump of weed and get her in. Again, you know, if I'm losing fish or whatnot, it doesn't matter how many fish are in the swim. There's no point fishing a swim where you know you're not going to land them. So if that's the case and it's just not happening... I'd pack up and move swim regardless of how many fish are in there. There's no point fishing for fish that we can't land. Anyway, thanks for watching. The rest of this video is going to show highlights of some of the fish we've had. All of them have come from this swim once the weed started growing. Uh, see you again soon. So quite weedy in the swim, but you know, these fish love it. So get in it, learn how to fish it and embrace it and have results like this. Fish number two. Fish number four, lost one as well. Fish number two, fish number three. Lewis has joined me after work. Fish number five is just, it's crazy. Landed on them, wind pushing in this corner. Every other angle is up the other end of the lake. I don't know why. The wind's down here, the fish are down here. And yeah, they're up for a feed, which is always nice. What an absolute perler of a scaly carp. 16 pounds, 12. What a result, and Lewis is just playing one now over there. So, yeah, we'll have a look at that as well. Absolutely. Nick. Here we have it, after catching a fully scaled, my, one of my best fish, nice dark one. I've gone and had one I really wanted after, see, I was lucky enough to see these fish being stocked and I've gone and had one that took my fancy. So yeah, I'll just show you her, absolutely gorgeous. So here she is, the other side, 
one of the front fish fish that got stopped. It's been after it. Can't really target fish. There's a lot of fish in here. I'm not going to go down that nippy nappy, but it is one that I would have liked. And yeah, I've got her. So wicked. I've lost count. Uh, it's wicked. It's one of those sessions. We all love them fishing, and yeah, it's just come good today. Um, we've got another one that Lewis has had. 16 pounds. Uh, fully scaled. Yeah, so we've had three fully scaled over 16 pounds between us, which is, you know, this, they're not the biggest thing, they're stunning. So, we're, yeah, we're both gobs going on. Having one of those sessions, it's going off. And uh, to be honest, we ain't had many small ones. They've all just been decent sized fish. They're late too, so I don't know what to say. It's one of those sessions, it's just happening. So, yeah, off we go home. Afternoon session success. Buzzing, it just it just all went right, we couldn't do anything wrong. 